Hello and welcome to the My School channel. My name is Angela and in this video we are going to be tackling the Literature CBT Jam Pass question for the year 2023. Please do not go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome back to the MySchool channel. In this video, we are going to be reviewing questions 21 to 40. Let's begin with question 21. A formal dignified speech or writing praising a person or thing for past or present dates is A. Lampoon, B. Eulogy, C. Premier, and D. Anthology. So the answer to this question is B. Eulogy. An eulogy is a formal or dignified speech written to praise someone or something. So it is typically written for someone who has just died to praise them for their deeds while they were alive. A lampoon is actually a humorous speech that is designed to criticize or make fun of someone or something. A premiere is the first of a series of performances of a particular play, while an anthology is a published collection of poetry or other piece of writing. So our answer to this question is B, eulogy. Question 22. A character that is always against the interests of the protagonist is A, opposition, B, heroine, C, villain, and D, hero. So the answer to this question is C, villain. The villain is the character that is always against the interests of the protagonist. In this case, it can be the hero or the heroine. So our answer to this question is C, villain. Question 23. So this excerpt is from Lade Wosono's Radar of the Treasure Trove. And we are to read the excerpt and try to answer the question. Rage is chief. Rage drags rags after you of charity, laughter, sweetness, and light. Rage is thief, enemy of equanimity. So the figure of speech dominant in these lines is A, apostrophe, B, personification, C, metaphor, and D, simile. So the answer to this question is B, personification. Personification is the assigning of human qualities to inanimate objects. In this case, Rage is being assigned human qualities. Rage is not a human being. It is an abstract idea. It is a concept. And so the human qualities assigned to the abstract idea of rage is the fact that rage is chief. It drags rags after you. Rage cannot drag something after someone else because it's an abstract idea. And they said rage is thief. It is an enemy of equanimity. All of this suggests that and human qualities are being assigned to an abstract idea. So this is why the answer to this question is B, personification. Question 24. So this excerpt is on same prose, and we're meant to analyze the passage and try to use it to answer the question that follows. So let's read the passage. Not a few of us ended our application letter like this. If you are kind enough to accommodate this humble application, sir slash madam, I shall do my uttermost best to render you the greatest services which it is at my disposition to your best satisfactory, yours obediently servant. Yet without English, you had no education fit for a white collar job. So this excerpt is from Cameroon Daudu's The Gab Boys. The tone of the passage above is A, melancholic, B, ironic, C, harsh, and D, derisive. So derisive is a tone that is designed to mock someone for something that the person says or does. So in this case, the author of the book is trying to mock the person who made these quotes. The person believed that is um, being neglected by the society, in spite of the fact that he has a good education. He is not given a white collar job like those who have no education. But the author is trying to pinpoint the fact that even though he has an education, he does not speak good English. You can see that in um, how he writes his application letter. He makes a lot of grammatical errors like the use of the word rendered, disposition instead of disposition, and the use of satisfactory instead of satisfaction. Then he also makes use of obediently instead of obedient servant. So this is the reason why the tone of this passage is derisive. So answer to this question is D. Question 25. A trilogy is the A, set of three one-act drama written by related authors 
be a series of related stories divided into three equal parts. C, sequence of three plays written by the same author, and D, collection of three poems of equal length. A trilogy is a set of um, three literary works written by the same author, and they may have um, related or interconnected themes, or they may not. It depends on that situation. So we have to look for the option that closely approximates to that. So in this case, for option A, set of three one-act drama written by related authors is not correct because it is written by the same author. For option B, series of related stories divided into three equal parts. This is not correct because it is not just one collection of stories that is divided into equal parts. It's actually three different literary works. So this can be our answer. And then we have sequence of three plays written by the same author. This is a close approximation to our answer because it talks about a sequence of three literary works written by the same author, although they are talking about just plays. So that could be our answer. Then lastly, we have collection of three poems of equal length. So this is not the answer to this question because poems are usually in a collection and a collection is just one literary work. And so our answer to this question is C. Sequence of three plays written by the same author. Question 26. Dramatis persona in a play refers to A, cast list, B, list of characters, C, protagonist and antagonist, and D, order of appearance. So the answer to this question is B, list of characters. At the beginning of a play or drama, you see the list of characters at the beginning of the work. Sometimes the actors are usually written alongside it. That's those people that actually act those characters out on the stage. That is referred to as the cast list. But the list of characters, those characters that are within that literary work, is the dramatis persona. So this is why the answer to this question is B, list of characters. Question 27. This question is based on second class citizen. She swallowed it all just like a nasty pill. The literary device employed here is A, alliteration, B, metaphor, C, simile, and D, apostrophe. So the answer to this question here is simile. Simile involves the comparison of two different ideas or concepts with the use of as or like. In this case, we can see the use of the word like. And the narrator is trying to compare how a dad, the main character in the story, try to accept a difficult situation in her life to how someone swallows a nasty pill. So the answer to this question is C, simile. Do you know you can take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass question? All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This takes you to the MySchool website. There you can download the MySchool mobile app for your Android devices and the MySchool software for your laptops and computers. Please go ahead and start practicing. Now on to question 28. My heart is a quiet drum. Sometimes it flares like a patch thunder cracking through a damask sky. It lifts me up in its fired spectacle. So this excerpt is from Cynthia James' Drumology. The imagery in the excerpts above is largely A, olfactory and visual, B, auditory and visual, C, tactile and auditory, and D, olfactory and tactile. So first of all, imagery is a literary device that involves the use of words and phrases in the literary work to help to paint pictures in the minds of the reader. So there are four main types of imagery in literature. We have visual, auditory, olfactory and tactile. So visual imagery involves appealing to the reader's sense of sight. Auditory imagery involves appealing to the reader's sense of hearing. Olfactory involves appealing to the reader's sense of smell. And tactile involves appealing to the reader's sense of touch. So the two imagery used in this poem are auditory and visual. So the poet makes use of auditory imagery in the phrase a quiet drum. So we can actually hear a drum as it is quietly beating in our minds when we hear this phrase. And that use of auditory imagery is in the phrase, a patch thunder cracking through a damask sky. So we can actually hear the thunder cracking as we listen to this particular phrase or as we read this particular phrase out. So you can see the use of auditory imagery there. Then the use of visual imagery can be found in the phrase, it flares like a patch thunder cracking through a damask sky. So in this case, we can see the thunder right in our minds as we read these lines. We can also see the use of visual imagery with the phrase, it's fired spectacle, right? There are some images that is being conjured up in our mind as we read this line. So this is why the answer to this question is B, auditory and visual. I believe you're enjoying this content. 
If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 29. So this is under unseen pros, so we have to analyze the text and then answer the question. She wanted to split herself, but she checked herself. Get dressed, she said earnestly. Get dressed and let's go. You know I have a lot of things to do. And if we are going to meet again like this, she slapped the bed, then it won't be here. It will be at the Samson and Delilah. So this excerpt is from Festus E.I.E.'s violence. In the passage above, the speaker can be described as A. Hungry, B. Domineering, C. Friendly, and D. Treacherous. So the answer to this question is B. Domineering. Domineering is a trait that involves feeling the need to control everything that is going on in your life. So in this case, the main character in this excerpt is domineering. She feels like she needs to control every single aspect of her life. You can see it with the first sentence. It says she wanted to split herself. That is one of the feelings that um, a very domineering person gets because she feels like she needs to divide herself so that she can control every aspect of her life. Then we can also see this domineering tendency with the command that she gives to the person she's referring to. She says, get dressed get dressed and let's go so she is trying to take command of everything that is going on and you can also see it with her action she slapped the bed that is one of the actions that a domineering person takes and this is why the answer to this question is b domineering question 30. the indication that showing cars the lion and the jewel is culturally set is its use of dash a dance and songs b flashback c foreshadowing the irony so the answer to this question is A, dance and songs. Dance and songs are some of the features that are common in Yoruba literature. In the pre-colonial African times, the Yoruba people used dance and songs to associate with one another and to relate their emotions to one another. And so Shoinka makes use of dance and songs in his play to show that the play is culturally set in the Yoruba land. So the answer to this question is A, dance and songs. Question 31. This question is based on the leader and the lead. The hyena says the crown is made for him. In the above excerpts, the use of the word crown is a good deployment of dash. A. Oxymoron. B. Imagery. C. Personification. And D. Synecdoche. So the answer to this question is C. Personification. Personification is the assigning of human qualities to inanimate objects. In this case, we are saying the hyena possesses the quality of speaking, which is a human quality. And um, the hyena is not a human being, but yet we are saying that he says the crown is made for him. This suggests the use of personification. So our answer to this question is C, personification. Question 32. The exclusive right given to authors to protect their works from unlawful production is A, an authority to write, B, a copyright, C, an author's right, and D, a constitutional provision. So the answer to this question is B, a copyright. A copyright is a right that is given to the author to prevent other people from copying or making use of their work without their permission. So our answer to this question is B, a copyright. Question 33. The narrative style in which the hero tells his own story directly is the A, objective, B, first person, C, subjective, and D, third person. So there are four narrative styles in literature. We have the first person, the second person, the third person objective, and the third person subjective. So in this case, the answer to this question is first person because it is a narrative style where the narrator, particularly the hero or maybe just the character in the story, gets to tell the story from his own perspective. So this is the reason the answer to this question is B, first person. Question 34. Lineation refers to A, the arrangement of lines and verse form, B, the grouping together of a number of units of rhythm, C, the units in the rhythmic structure of verse, and D, tracing family descent of people in verse. So the answer to this question is A, the arrangements of lines in verse form. Lineation refers to the breaking down of um, poetry into lines and verses. A complete source of phrase is usually expressed in a single line, and you know, at the end of a complete thought, that is where the line ends. And the arrangement of these lines into verses is what lineation is all about. And so the answer to this question is A, the arrangement of lines in verse form. Question 35. The subject matter of a literary work is the A theme, B plot, C structure, and D setting. 
So in this particular question, we are looking for something that is closely related to the concept of subject matter. The subject matter in a literary work is usually the central idea, the topic, what the literary work is about. The theme is the central message that the author, the dramatist, or the poet is trying to pass across to the reader. It is the central message. The plot is the storyline. It is the framework of the story in that literary work. Structure is not exactly a literary term. While setting is the physical, the temporal, and the cultural background of a literary work. So the closest in meaning in relation to the concept of subject matter is theme. Because while subject matter is the central idea, the theme is the central message. So answer to this question is A, theme. Question 36. A structural arrangement of units of composition by which one element of equal importance with another is similarly placed is called A, repetition, B, paradox, C, refrain, and D, parallelism. So the answer to this question is parallelism. Parallelism is a rhetorical device in which structural elements of phrases of equal importance are placed side by side. An example is from an earlier question um, which says, be him African, be him Nigerian, be him English. So there's the use of parallelism there with the repetition of be him in all three lines. This is to show the equal importance of each of the phrases in that verse. So the answer to this question is the parallelism. Do you have a question? Please feel free to ask your question by clicking the link in the description below. This takes you to the My School website. There you can ask your question and a solution will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now on to question 37. This question is based on caged bird. For the caged bird sings of freedom. So the poetic device used in this expression is dash, A metaphor, B irony, C hyperbole, and D paradox. So the answer to this question is B irony. Irony is a literary device that in which the intended meaning is different from the expected meaning. In the case of this phrase, we're expecting a caged bear to be sad, to be downcast, and if at all he's singing, he should be singing about the terrible situation that he is in. But instead, he's singing about freedom. So this is a situation where the intended meaning is different from the expected meaning. We expect the caged bear to be downcast, but he's singing of freedom. So answer to this question is B. Irony. Do you have a better explanation or solution to any of these questions? Please feel free to indicate by going down to the comment section below, indicating the question number and the solution you would like to share. Question 38. Will college make you a better or local priest? Will it make you serve our ancestors better? Look at me, an able-bodied, strong-hearted priest of Olokun. Did I go to college? So this excerpt is from Grace Yosifo's Dizzy Angel. The literary device used in the passage above is A, onomatopoeia, B, parallelism, C, metaphor, and D, simile. So the answer to this question is B, parallelism. Parallelism involves the repetition of grammatical structure in a passage. So in this case, there is the repetition of will, will it, and will in the first and second line. So the repetition of this structure and also the repetition of the questions is parallelism. So the reason for the use of parallelism in this line is to make the narrator much more eloquent and captivating. And so this is why the answer to this question is B, parallelism. Question 39. This question is based on radar of the treasure trove. To fly flags of joy, two figures of speech used here are A, alliteration and personification, B, onomatopoeia and simile, C, metaphor and alliteration, and this simile and personification. So the answer to this question is C, metaphor and alliteration. Metaphor is the direct comparison of two different ideas or concepts. So in this case, there is the use of metaphor in the expression to fly flags of joy. Here you are comparing how the display or expression of joy can be compared to how those who fly flags help to display or express patriotism. So that shows the use of metaphor in that expression. There is also the use of alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sounds in a particular line. In this case, there is the repetition of an un sound at the beginning of fly and flags. So the use of alliteration in this case helps to make that particular line much more redeeming. So the answer to this question is C, metaphor and alliteration. Question 40. This question is based on the song of the women of my land. Use the excerpt to answer this question. They sang in the fallen fields about their lives, 
songs of how they plow the terrain of their landscape for memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time. In those days, when a song beheld their lives, when servitude coughed the ankles of their soul and their election decapitated the epics of their lives. The theme of this excerpt is dash A, all of the above, B, the, ex the oppression of women, C, the joys of motherhood, and decolonization. So the answer to this question is B, the oppression of women. And we can see this in the poem where they said um, they had to plow the terrain of their landscape, how they lost some of their memories in the vast void of time, how servitude coughed the ankles of their soul, and how dereliction of suffering decapitated the epics of their lives. All this suggests that they are being oppressed by the situation that they find themselves in. So the theme of joys of motherhood and colonization are not themes that can be found in this excerpt, but they are themes that can be found you know, when you read the poem as a whole. So the answer to this question is B, the oppression of women. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.